Directed by the maestro Christopher Nolan, Oppenheimer starring Killian Murphy, Matt Damon and Robert Downey Jr. in the lead roles is finally released in theaters. As the enchanting biopic releases worldwide without this would be the perfect time to discuss all the scientists who appeared in the film and their contributions in detail. A spoiler warning is in order as we will be discussing essential plot points and character details from the film but if you are done watching it already let's dive straight into the video. And yeah, while you're at it, please like the video and subscribe to our channel. It helps us a lot. Thank you and let's move on. The film is practically an endgame-like event but with well-known scientists from all over the world. With small cameos as well as playing important roles, the scientists in this film are portrayed as mythological figures and they enchanted the enthusiast of the subject. Now let's talk in detail about these extremely brilliant minds of that generation. Played by Killian Murphy, J. Robert Oppenheimer is the protagonist of the film and we are interested to see how he interprets the role. Every person experiences struggles and disagreements throughout their lives but very rarely do they have to deal with a situation as complicated as Robert Oppenheimer did after being given control of the Manhattan engineering project. Oppenheimer was curious to know if building an atomic bomb was a possibility as soon as he learned about the discovery of fission. The destruction of Hiroshima and Nagasaki caused by his creation, the atomic bomb changed the narrative for him after he overcame all the obstacles. Robert witnessed the suffering of the innocent people who were drawn into the war despite having nothing to do with it and living peacefully while the bombings were taking place. Robert also saw how catastrophic the effects of the bombings were. The brilliant scientist was destroyed by the guilt of having caused such a massive catastrophe and given the world something over which they had no control. He was burdened by his internal conflicts until the very end because he was unable to dissolve them. President Harry S. Truman wanted to get rid of Oppenheimer because he had turned into an enemy of the state when he began arguing that the world didn't need a hydrogen bomb. The loss of the state's trust didn't bother Robert Oppenheimer in the least but all he wanted was to be free of his guilty conscience and have the opportunity to atone for his wrongdoings. Emily Blunt is portraying Catherine, also known as Kitty, Robert Oppenheimer's wife in the movie. When Catherine first met Oppenheimer, she had recently ended her marriage with Stuart Harrison. The moment she saw the brilliant scientist, she fell in love and she didn't hold back when telling him how she felt. Before Robert decided to take the position of director of the Los Alamos laboratory, the couple enjoyed a long period of blissful marriage. Following that, Robert always had a full workload while Kitty's life came to a complete halt. She was a botanist and a biologist but after they moved to New Mexico, she was unable to return to her line of work in the way she had always desired. After a while, this really started to bother her. While working in the lab, Catherine made every effort to avoid feeling lonely, frustrated or like she had no one to talk to. Over time, Catherine experienced a sense of abandonment. To deal with her loneliness, Catherine began drinking, which led to her rapid descent into alcoholism. Every now and then, Robert would try to cheer her up a bit but it was never enough. Since her husband's extramarital relationship with Jean Tadlock was publicly known, we think Catherine would have had a problem with Jean as well. She wouldn't have been unaware of it either because it was obvious to everyone that her husband was having an affair. We are confident that despite all of their disagreements, Catherine was always there for her husband and that he always looked to her for guidance when he was faced with moral choices. Oppenheimer's younger brother Frank, played by Dylan Arnold, would follow in his older brother's footsteps by studying physics and joining the Manhattan Project. He also adhered to Oppenheimer's leftist political views and against Oppenheimer's advice joined the Communist Party alongside his wife Jackie. Played by Benny Sabdi, Edward Taylor, a Hungarian-American physicist who was a fellow member of the Manhattan Project, had some professional enmity with Oppenheimer over the Manhattan Project's decision to prioritize the development of fission-type weapons over the fusion-type weapons that were ultimately employed. Taylor initially declined to sign Zillard's petition opposing the use of the atomic bomb on civilians after consulting Oppenheimer, though he later came to regret his choice. In the future, Teller would also become recognized as the inventor of the hydrogen bomb, which would eventually succeed the atomic bomb. In 1954, Taylor would testify against Oppenheimer. The two employed different political ideologies to fulfill their ambitions. Played by Gustav Skarsgård, Hans B., the German-American theoretical physicist, was personally invited to the Manhattan Project by Oppenheimer and would later be in charge of its T-Division. 
was determined the explosive yield of the A-bomb. Edward Taylor and Beat had been close friends for a while, but they frequently disagreed about the best strategy for developing weapons while working for Oppenheimer. Played by Rami Malik, David Hill, an experimental physicist who worked on the Manhattan Project at the University of Chicago, was one of the 70 scientists who signed the Zillard petition. He also spoke at Strauss's Senate confirmation hearing, where he accused Strauss of turning Oppenheimer's security hearings into a petty smear operation and criticized his attempt to character assassinate the great mind. Played by Josh Hartnett, Ernest Lawrence, a significant contributor to the Manhattan Project, first worked with Oppenheimer at the University of California, Berkeley, where he also created the cyclotron that won him the Nobel Prize and served as a forerunner to the modern particle accelerator. In fact, he named his son Robert after Oppenheimer because they were close friends. Their relationship, however, soured as a result of their political differences regarding Oppenheimer's unionization efforts and his brother's communist sympathies. In spite of his refusal to testify against his former friend during the 1954 hearings, his critical remarks were still applied. Played by Mitch Homan, Leo Szilard, a Hungarian-German-American scientist who first invented the nuclear chain reaction, vehemently opposed the use of nuclear weapons against civilians. He issued what became known as the Zillard Petition, and Harriet Truman informs Japan of the terms of the Allies' surrender and allows them to accept or reject the terms before considering the nuclear option. Played by Kenneth Branagh, Niels Bohr, a Danish physicist who was one of the most well-known scientists of the 20th century, is the reason why we depict atoms with electrons orbiting a nucleus in the manner that we do. Despite having a brief involvement with the Manhattan Project, Oppenheimer acknowledges Bohr's significant contributions. As an ecstatic young Oppenheimer watches his first scene in the movie, delivering a lecture on quantum physics at Cambridge. Played by David Krumholz, Isidore Isaac Rabi, a Polish-born New Yorker who worked on the Manhattan Project and was a fellow Nobel Prize winning physicist, first met Oppenheimer in the 1920s while they were both studying abroad in Germany. Rabi would even give testimony in support of Oppenheimer at his hearings, cementing their friendship as lifelong friends. Only Krumholz's character brings up Oppenheimer's Judaism with him because of their shared background, and he always makes sure the father of the atomic bomb is fed. Played by Matthew Modin, scientist and inventor Vannevar Bush was in charge of informing President Roosevelt in 1942 about Oppenheimer's work on the Manhattan Project. He was also a member of the committee that advised Truman, Roosevelt's successor, to use the atomic bomb against Japan right away. Played by Michael Angarano, a further of Oppenheimer's personal appointees to the Manhattan Project, was physicist Robert Serber, who was also one of his Berkeley colleagues. According to how each bomb project looked, Serber came up with the code names for them, Little Boy delivered on Hiroshima, Fat Man delivered on Nagasaki, and the unutilized Thin Man design a massive plutonium gun. Played by David Dashmalki, an executive director of the US Congress Joint Committee on Atomic Energy, William Borden, when Oppenheimer was less enthusiastic about the idea in the early 1950s, was a strong supporter of the development of nuclear weapons. He conspired with Lee Strauss for personal gain. Investigating Oppenheimer's allegiance was made possible by Edgar Hoover and him, who accused him of being a Soviet Union agent. He spends the majority of the movie compiling his file on Oppenheimer, but he does appear in a fleeting but memorable flashback in a fighter plane's cockpit. Played by Olivia Thulwe, scientist Lily Horing, who had previously worked as a typist at Los Alamos, impressed her Manhattan Project superiors and was eventually accepted into the nuclear community, though with restrictions because the project's members believed that plutonium chemistry was too dangerous for women. When Robert Serbert expresses concerns about the effects of radiation on the female reproductive system, this fact becomes dramatized in the movie. Horning also signed the Los Alamos scientist's petition requesting that the bomb be dropped on an uninhabited island in place of civilian targets, as part of the movement against using the atomic bomb on civilians. Played by Jack Quaid, Richard Feynman, well known for Feynman diagrams, the graphic representations of various interactions between different particles, was selected for the Manhattan Project before receiving his graduate degree, and he went on to become one of the most well-known physicists of the 20th century. 
His initial role on the project was administrative but eventually took on more duties such as creating safety protocols for uranium storage and performing theoretical calculations for a hypothetical uranium hydride bomb, though this would turn out to be impossible to build. Later in 1965, his work in quantum electrodynamics would earn him the Nobel Prize. He can be seen playing the bongos in the movie just as he did in real life which also inspired Sheldon Cooper from the Big Bang Theory who was a huge Feynman fanboy. Played by Josh Peck, Kenneth Brainbage, a Harvard physicist, oversaw the Trinity test and collaborated closely with Oppenheimer. He eventually disagreed with nuclear testing as a result of his involvement with the Manhattan Project. He is the one who presses the absurdly big red button in the film to start the test. Played by James Turkey, Oppenheimer's British professor was an experimental physicist Patrick Blackett. Oppenheimer, who was at the time socially inept, made the more outgoing Blackett the target of his jealousy and attempted to feed him a poisoned apple, a plot that plays out to strange and hilarious effect in the movie. Blackett served on Britain's Mod Committee, which was established to assess the viability of nuclear weapons, despite having no known connection to the Manhattan Project. Played by Danny DeFerrari, Enrico Fermi, a well-known physicist who developed the first nuclear reactor in history, joined the Manhattan Project in 1944, after it had already begun. He gave the interim committee advice on potential Japanese targets along with Oppenheimer and Lawrence. Together with Oppenheimer, he advised the Atomic Energy Commission after World War II not to develop hydrogen bombs and testified in Oppenheimer's favor during the hearings. Played by Devon Bostick, Seth Neremeyer, a physics prodigy who made a number of groundbreaking discoveries in his 20s, contributed significantly to the Manhattan Project as a strong supporter of the implosion-type reaction the atomic bombs would eventually use. His work on the project is considered to be one of the most significant. The development and testing of this method were given to Neremeyer by Oppenheimer, despite the initial skepticism of some of his colleagues. After Hiroshima was bombed, he is depicted in the movie as experiencing a negative emotional reaction. Played by Alex Wolf, experimental physicist Louis Walter Alvarez studied under Ernest Lawrence at Berkeley and went on to win the Nobel Prize. He later joined the Manhattan Project after being persuaded by Oppenheimer to do so, and while there he worked with Enrico Fermi at the University of Chicago. He also contributed to the creation of techniques for identifying nuclear activity in other nations. He can be seen in the movie hurriedly running out of a barber shop in the middle of shaving to inform Oppenheimer and Lawrence that German scientists Otto Hahn and Fritz Strassmann had successfully created nuclear fission. Played by Josh Zuckerman, Lumanis joined the Manhattan Project after working for Oppenheimer at Berkeley's radiation lab. Later, as a result of his connections to the Communist Party, Lumanis was one of the Oppenheimer hearing subjects. Lumanis is first seen in the movie as Oppenheimer's first student at Berkeley. Played by Matthias Schwiegofer, Werner Heisenberg, a German theoretical physicist, is frequently recognized as the father of quantum mechanics. He made a significant contribution to Germany's atomic program during World War II and was later taken prisoner by a USS Britain mission to rescue nuclear personnel and intelligence from Germany before the Soviet Union. On Niels Bohr advice, Oppenheimer travels to Göttingen to study theory under Heisenberg in the movie. Played by Christopher Denham, German-born physicist Klaus Fuchs, also known as Carl at Los Alamos, fled to Britain during World War II and worked on uranium enrichment for the Manhattan Project while spying for the Soviet Union. Oppenheimer was unaware of the spy's identity until Strauss informed him at a party several years after the end of World War II. Played by James Urbania, Kurt Gödel was an Austro-Hungarian mathematician and logistician who was close to Einstein. Albert Einstein's friendship with this Jewish member of the Vienna Circle put him under Nazi scrutiny. After that, in 1939, he was drafted to fight for Germany but fled to Princeton. In a movie, he and Einstein were seen strolling through the Princeton campus when Oppenheimer asked the latter for advice. Gödel only makes a fleeting appearance but he leaves an impression with his admiration for trees which he refers to as the perfect structure. Played by Tom Conti, Albert Einstein is the only person on this list whose name practically denotes genius. However, up until he was persuaded otherwise in 1939, the world-famous physicist hadn't given the possibility of nuclear weapons any thought. 
Soon after, he and the same Zillard, who would later lead the petition for the demonstration, signed the Einstein Zillard letter, pleading with then President Franklin Roosevelt to launch a US based nuclear program, lest Nazi Germany surpass them in developing their own. He was awarded the Nobel Prize for his work on the photoelectric effect. The visuals of the film look enchanting, all thanks to the cinematographer and former Nolan collaborator Hoytemann Hoytema. The music of the film created by Academy Award winner Ludwig Göransson heightens the tension and ends on a high note that makes us look for some hidden clue. The film looks glorious as it uses practical effects for critical scenes and Nolan goes the extra mile to achieve those visuals. There are a lot of images behind the scenes circulating all over social media and you can see the efforts put into the frames to achieve the explosion scenes practically. The performance of Killian Murphy looks amazing as he gets inside the skin of the character and through his eyes the devastation and horrors felt by the character pierce through our hearts. The trailer gives us a glimpse of the world at war and takes us on a different journey of what happened behind the scenes of the devastating war. The performances were extremely good be it the leads or the side characters but in my eyes it is Robert Downey Jr who unexpectedly scores some big show stealing moments. So as of now all we can do is watch the film repeatedly and appreciate it by going to the biggest possible theater. Hey 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 thank you for watching this video do share your thoughts in the comment section about your experience of watching Oppenheimer in theaters hit the like button and subscribe to our channel to get your weekly dose of cinema and series. See you at the next one and for the time being we are signing off, don't know the go away now I'm become dead, the destroyer of worlds and I'll be back.